Today we're making ceviche, and I have eaten endless amounts of ceviche on travels across Mexico. I even popped down to Cabo to do a bunch of ceviche taste tests, all in the name of market research for you guys. But here's what I love about ceviche. It's incredibly easy to make and uses only a handful of fresh, healthy ingredients. It's light and fresh and a great way to cool off on a bright and sunny day, or if you're lounging around by a pool. Now, my version is obviously inspired by Mexican ceviche, and that typically includes ingredients like shrimp or whitefish, tomatoes, cucumber, red onion, jalapeno or serrano pepper, and cilantro. But I would be remiss to not give a shout out to my Peruvian followers, as ceviche is their national dish, and it's often a simpler presentation with fewer ingredients that really allows the citrus marinated fish to shine and take center stage. I'll have to make another ceviche recipe for that one in the future, but today let's dive into this Mexican inspired ceviche. To get started, you'll need one pound of firm white fish like sea bass, snapper, cod, or halibut. I'm using halibut today as it was on sale at my local fishmonger and it's fresh wild Alaskan halibut, which is my favorite. Shrimp is also a favorite in ceviche, and you could certainly swap it in this recipe or make the citrus shrimp ceviche recipe on my website. But today I'm highlighting ceviche de pescado, which uses fish rather than shrimp. And if you hold tight, I'll show you some of the delicious ceviche variations I enjoyed on my recent Cabo trip here in a second. So once you have your one pound of fresh fish, slice it up into small bite-sized cubes, and then add it to a large glass or non-reactive mixing bowl. So that means don't use a copper or aluminum bowl, and that's because you're gonna marinate the fish in a bunch of lime juice, and you don't want a metallic flavor ruining your dish. In terms of the lime juice, you'll need half a cup of fresh lime juice, which is about five to six limes, depending on how juicy they are. I always recommend grabbing softer limes that have a bit of give to them because if they're super firm and hard, they're likely fairly dried up on the inside and it's always a bummer when your limes barely give you any juice. I personally also like to add the juice of one lemon to my ceviche, which is about three tablespoons of lemon juice. Though I will say lemon juice is not common in traditional Mexican ceviche where lime juice reigns supreme. So feel free to use all lime juice in this recipe as well. Pour all that lime and lemon juice on top of the raw fish, cover the bowl, and let it marinate in the fridge for 20 to 30 minutes or so. The acidity of the lime juice cooks the fish and you'll notice the fish go opaque as this happens. You can certainly marinate the fish longer if you'd like, but just be aware that the longer it marinates, the more it will cook and it may turn a bit more tough and rubbery. So while the fish is marinating, we can slice up the other ingredients for the ceviche. And since I'm going with a Mexican inspired recipe today, I'll add tomatoes, cucumber, and red onion, which are most commonly added. For the tomatoes and cucumber, I do a fairly small dice so that the chunks are a bit smaller than the pieces of fish. And then you can chop the red onion as chunky or fine as you prefer. For the tomatoes, I'm using two Roma tomatoes as they're less juicy, though really any tomato variety works. You could even use grape tomatoes and then just slice them in half. And for the cucumber, you can use either a field cucumber or English cucumber. Field cucumbers have thicker skin, but as I'm peeling the cucumber today, the skin doesn't really matter. So once the cucumber is peeled, just slice and dice that up, along with half of a small red onion. In terms of spiciness or heat level, this can vary greatly. I'm dicing up one jalapeno pepper today, and after it's cut, I'll just shimmy my spoon on the inside to remove the seeds. Serrano peppers, which are hotter, are often used as well, and I do find that the heat level fluctuates depending on where you get your ceviche. Touristy places tend to be less hot, and more authentic restaurants tend to be more hot, but when you make it at home, you can of course alter the heat level to your liking. Chop up half a bunch of cilantro for an herby pop, and then I also like to add one avocado. It's not quite as common to have the avocado diced with the ceviche, even though I like to serve it that way, but you'll often find avocado slices on the side, like on this one that I enjoyed at the office restaurant in Cabo. Now, this one was a shrimp ceviche. I actually ordered fish, but this was served up, and I was too hungry to send it back and wait for another. So I just enjoyed it. Plus, who can be upset when you're eating any type of ceviche under an umbrella with a strawberry margarita and your toes in the sand? I also tried to get out of the main touristy area in Cabo to where more of the locals eat and found this great place called Morisco's Kraken. 
They used sea bass in their ceviche, and instead of chopped peppers, used a hot chili pepper sauce. And I can tell you that this version was much spicier and hotter than the previous one, and definitely got my sinuses going as I ate it. But it was so darn good that I wasn't gonna let any of it go to waste, so I just downed a whole bottle of water at the same time. And you can see it was served up with avocado and cucumber slices on the side. So similar ingredients, just different presentation. And for a much more unique version and non-traditional ceviche, I had coconut milk ceviche with serrano pepper, mint, and jicama from Tamarindos, which is a very popular farm-to-table restaurant. But let's get back to my ceviche recipe, and the good news is that once you've chopped and diced all the veggies, it's probably been about 20 to 30 minutes or so, and your fish should now have turned opaque, meaning that it's cooked through. And that's due to a process called denaturing, where the acid of the lime juice breaks down the protein structure in the fish, similar to what heat would do. You can leave the lime juice in the bowl, there's no need to drain it, and then just pile the ingredients on top of the fish, including the tomato, cucumber, red onion, avocado, jalapeno pepper, cilantro, and lastly, a teaspoon of kosher salt. You definitely don't wanna forget the salt. Stir that all together until you've got this vibrant bowl of ceviche that's punctuated with lots of red and green. You can then pour the ceviche into a serving bowl if you're serving this up for a family gathering or dinner party. And oh, I should also mention that all of the lime juice in the ceviche helps to preserve the color of the avocado and prevent it from going brown, so you don't have to worry about that either. Now, I'm one who likes to eat the ceviche straight out of a bowl with a spoon, because as soon as I can smell it, I wanna dig in. But if you wanna do something fun, you can also serve up individual portions in small glasses. I have these mini trifle glasses that are perfect and the little stand really makes them easy to grab and hold, though any glasses work. You could even add a tortilla chip or two on the side and of course serve up a larger bowl of tortilla chips as scooping devices as well. I hope you enjoyed today's ceviche recipe and the little video snippet from my trip to Cabo. And if you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and share it with your family and friends because Cinco de Mayo and summer parties are right around the corner.